Number 17. From their positions in the periodic table, arrange the atoms in each of the following series in order of increasing electronegativity. All right, so for A through E, all we have to do is rank these atoms from basically the smallest electronegativity all the way to the largest because they wanted an increasing electronegativity. All right, so that means that we need to know the trend. The trend for electronegativity is the same as ionization energy, which we learned in last chapter. So as we go from left to right across a period, electronegativity would increase. So it would get larger and larger and larger. Just remember that that stops here. Noble gases don't have high electronegativity numbers because they are inert. They don't really like to react with other um, atoms. So just know that fluorine would actually be the highest electronegative atom. And then as we drop down, as we go down a group, electronegativity EN decreases. So it gets less and less and less. All right. So we have to just take that in mind and rank these five as far as smallest electronegativity to highest electronegativity. Now, something that might help you out a lot is just know that metals will have less electronegativity than metalloids, generally speaking, which will have less electronegativity uh, than your nonmetals. So nonmetals have the highest because they always like to be negative charges, so therefore they would pull electrons more closer to themselves, and that's what electronegativity is. Metalloids come next because they have both metal and nonmetal properties, and then metals would have the lowest electronegativity. So f fluorine, which is a nonmetal, would have the highest electronegativity. Francium, which is a metal, has the lowest electronegativity. Just as a quick, quick side note. All right, so A, we have to compare carbon, fluorine, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So the first thing I, I will do is I will circle these atoms. So we have carbon, fluorine, hydrogen, which is over here, nitrogen, and oxygen. Now this one, they were nice, right? They gave, us, gave it to us all in a line. It looks like electronegativity is increasing as we go across the second period. And then hydrogen's over here, which would mean that hydrogen is has the smallest electronegativity, so hydrogen would have to start first, and then I can just go from left to right. So then carbon, then nitrogen, then oxygen, and then fluorine, and box that answer off. That would be your ranking from smallest electronegativity to highest for A. Um, now, let's see. I'll, ke I'll keep those there. We'll just do it in a different color. All right, so for B, we have bromine, chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen, and iodine. So if I circle those in black, we have bromine, chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen, and iodine. This one, they were nice again, right? Everything is nice straight in a line except for hydrogen, but remember, as we had to go from hydrogen all the way to fluorine, electronegativity increased. So that means that these are going to be larger than hydrogen because I had to travel so much to get there, and that's increasing. But as you go down, you decrease. So hydrogen would have the lowest, because it's all the way over here, then iodine, right? Because you decrease as you go down. Then comes bromine, then comes chlorine, and then comes fluorine. That would be the progression for B. And that one's done. Next, we got C. Um, fluorine, fluorine again. So if you kind of know the trend, fluorine looks like it's going to be the highest electronegative element, and it is the highest. So if you see fluorine, that's going to be the highest. So we got fluorine, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So let me circle these in red. Fluorine, hydrogen, oxygen, 
phosphorus, and sulfur. Hmm. All right, so these are getting a little tricky now. But we can kind of see similarities. I see that we have fluorine, which means that fluorine has to be the most electronegative element, so I could cancel that one out. And hydrogen is all alone over here, so hydrogen should be the lowest electronegative. So that gets rid of these. Now we just have to work on these three, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So if you see here, we increase from left to right, and we drop down, we decrease. So we increase from left to right, we decrease as we go drop down. So which one do you think would have the highest out of these three, phosphorus, sulfur, and oxygen? It would be oxygen. Oxygen would have the highest electronegativity out of all three of these because oxygen was the only one that you didn't have to drop down. So oxygen would be right next to fluorine. And now we just got to put phosphorus and sulfur next to each other. As you go from left to right, you increase. So makes sense that sulfur would be more electronegative than phosphorus. So sulfur and then phosphorus, and that's the trend for C. That one was a little tricky. D. Aluminum, hydrogen, sodium, oxygen, and phosphorus. All right, so now they're throwing in metals, but we kind of know the trend. Metals would have a smaller electronegativity than metalloids, than nonmetals. So aluminum and sodium are both metals. They would probably be on the lower end of the scale. So let's circle these. I'll put these in yellow. So let's see, we got aluminum, hydrogen, sodium, oxygen, and phosphorus. Let's see. So metals got to go first. So between sodium and aluminum, which one would have the greater electronegativity? Well, definitely aluminum, right? Because as you go from left to right, electronegativity increases. So sodium has got to be the smallest, right? Because it's a metal, and as you work your way down, you decrease. So sodium has got to be the lowest, then comes aluminum. So that gets rid of these two. Now we're dealing with the three non-metals left. And you guys can kind of see the trend, right? Hydrogen, between hydrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, hydrogen had the lowest. Then came phosphorus, and then finally, because oxygen is all the way to the farthest right, that would have the highest electronegativity, and that's the trend for D. And then last but not least, we have barium, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and arsenic. So here we go again with the metals and the nonmetals now. Barium is a metal, then comes hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and arsenic. So now I have a metal and a metalloid. Which one would have the lower electronegativity of the two? Metals, right? And then comes metalloids, and then comes all your nonmetals. So by default, barium would be the lowest because it's a metal. Arsenic would come next because it is a metalloid. And now we're ready to talk about hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, which we know from before. Hydrogen would be have the least electronegativity out of the three. Nitrogen and oxygen, as you go from left to right, you increase. So nitrogen would come next, and then oxygen, and that's that. And you're done with this question. So this one was a good question. Kind of made you think about how to arrange the electronegativity values. But just remember this nice little trick. Metals are always less than metalloids, which are always less than nonmetals as far as electronegativity. All right? So this one was fun. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have any questions, I'll always answer you guys. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind, click the subscribe button. It helps the community out. And hopefully we could do bigger and better things than just have the OpenStax textbooks for you guys. Hopefully we can do live sessions and all that stuff. So that would be kind of cool. Thank you so much for coming to the end. I'll see you guys in the next question. Happy studying.